Welcome to the next lecture um, in statistics 1.3, uh, simple random sampling. Here we're going to look at um, how to attain a simple random sample and do some definition and vocabulary. We've already seen a, a number of different ways of doing observational studies, but they can also be conducted by administering a survey. When administering a survey, you first have to identify the population that's to be targeted, obviously depending upon what your question is or what you're trying to find out. The Gallup organization is a huge surveying company and they regularly survey Americans about various um, items. Of course, they cannot survey all adult Americans or any subgroup of Americans because in this case for adult Americans there are over 200 million. So in instead, um, organizations and people typically survey a random sample of, a, of that overall population. Here, the Gallup organization typically sand, surveys a random sample of about 1,000 adult Americans. For the results to be reliable, the characteristics of the individual in the sample must be representative of the characteristics in the population. So <clears throat> we have to make sure that our sample isn't skewed one way or another. And that's the idea of what random sampling is. Random sampling is the process of using chance to select individuals from a population to be included in the sample. Okay, but of course, as you can see just above, the individuals in the sample have to be representative of the characteristics in the population. And what this is really talking about is um, that how you select has to be based upon randomness and not convenience. And your book gives a great example about this. For ex They were saying if the Gallup poll wanted to figure out what percentage of Americans were fans of baseball, yet they waited outside a baseball stadium to survey people, uh, this is what they would call a... Um, a sample of convenience um, and it's also going to be skewed because while maybe not everyone going to a baseball game is going to be a fan you can assume a good majority are or they wouldn't be there to begin with so that's a nice little example to explain that if you use convenience to find people um, then your results are skewed or, or as it says here meaningless so let's look at some more information about obtaining a simple random sample a sample of size lowercase n from a population of size uppercase m is attained through a simple random sampling if every possible sample of size n has equally likely chance of occurring. So again, what we're talking here is about, you know, an overall population of people with this characteristic would be the uppercase n, or that's how many people. So let's just say that's a population of 100,000. <clears> And we want a sample size, say, of 100 people. Well, if every grouping of 100 different people has an equal likelihood chance of occurring, then it's simple random sampling. The sample is then called a simple random sample. So the group of 100 that I just mentioned would be called a simple random sample. And hopefully this last part in yellow and um, italics is... is um, common sense and logical to you that the number of individuals in a sample is always less than the number of individuals in the population because you're taking um, groups out of a population you're taking the population is the larger group and you're taking a smaller subset which is the sample so let's look at an example about uh, to do this this is example one from your text Sophia has four tickets to a concert six of her friends Yolanda, Michael, Kevin, Marissa, Annie, and Katie have all expressed an interest in going to the concert. Sophia decides to randomly select three of her six friends to attend the concert. A. List all possible samples of size n equals 3 from the population of size n equals 6. Once an individual is chosen, he or she cannot be chosen again. B. Comment on the likelihood of the sample containing Michael, Kevin, and Marissa. Okay, 
Now this comment about once an individual is chosen, he or she cannot be chosen again. You may say, well, duh, I can't take uh, Michael, Michael and Kevin to the concert because there's only one Michael. But there are cases where um, you can select the same um, individual for a sample multiple times, okay? And we'll get more into those details later on. So this is a good time to hit pause and see if you can do this. Again, what you're trying to do, it's a little bit complicated. Sometimes using a tree chart um, or other ways can help it. Often it's just, you know, starting with Yolanda and Michael and then doing the next name. So Yolanda, Michael, Kevin, Yolanda, Michael, Marissa, Yolanda, Michael, Annie, etc. So see if you can come up with all the possible samples. Hit pause and then we'll continue on. OK, once you've done all the samples, see if you can figure out what's the likelihood of a sample containing my, these specific three individuals, Michael, Kevin and Marissa. Again, hit pause, try this out and then um, come back to us when you're ready. So again, if we look at all the possible sandal, samples of size three, and again, this is what I was talking about, go Yolanda, Michael, Kevin, Yolanda, Michael, Marissa, etc. And then go to the next person, Yolanda, Kevin, Marissa, Yolanda, Kevin, Annie, Yolanda, Kevin, Katie. Okay, you run all those out because you've done it and then keep moving on. This is a little bit challenging and there are ways to figure out how many different groupings there are. But we can see here that we've created um, 20 different possible samples of size three. And again, the term sample means the individual in the sample. So this very first sample is Yolanda, Michael, and Kevin. Okay, so the second question was, what was the likelihood of that specific sample? Well, since there are 20 um, total possible samples, and that is one case of the 20, then only one of the 20 contains Michael, Kevin, and Marissa. So there's a one in 20 chance that the simple random sample will, will pertain to these three. In fact, all samples of size three have a one in 20 chance, and that's what makes it a random sample because they're all equally likely to occur. Sometimes we use random numbers when we're trying to create a simple random sample um, to try to avoid any kind of maybe unconscious bias or sometimes with larger groups, etc. And the way that we do this is that each individual in the population is assigned a unique number between 1 and n, where n is, of course, the size of the population. Then lowercase n distinct random numbers from this list are selected, where n represents the size of the sample. So let's say uh, we're going to look at an example, but you um, have a group of 100 items or 100 individuals and you want to sample five of them. So again, you would, instead of putting their names, you would list um, their names next to the numbers one through 100. And then you would randomly choose five numbers between one and 100. Once you've chosen those numbers randomly, then you would go back to your list and identify who those people would be. And so um, to number the individuals in the population, we need a frame. And that's that list. That would be the list of the names of the 100 people next to the numbers 1 through 100. So a frame is simply a list of all the individuals within the population. We've already talked about this, and this is the vocabulary language. In a sample without replacement, like we saw in the ticket example one, an individual who is selected is removed from the population and cannot be selected or chosen again. However, there are samples with replacement where a selected individual is placed back into the population and could be chosen a second time. Um, okay, so those are two different types. Without replacement means you can't have duplicates in your sample. With replacement means that you can. So let's look at example two, how we might obtain a simple random sample if we used a table of sample, um, a, a table of random numbers. The accounting firm of Sinise and Associates has grown to make sure their clients are still satisfied with the services they are receiving. <clears throat> the company decides to send a survey out to a simple random sample of five of its 30 clients. So in order to select the 30 clients, 
first we need to create a frame or a list of all of the clients. Here they've arranged them in alphabetical order, although that's not necessary. And in fact, you might want to not do it again for randomness to try to avoid any bias, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and, um, and they've also numbered them from 1 to 30. Now notice we numbered them from 0, 1 to, zero, to 30. And that's usually a good idea to have the same number of digits in each number. So if we were in the hundreds, we would probably number from 0, 0, 1 to you know, 123 or whatever. Okay, so the first part is just to create the frame, which is a list of all of the individuals um, in the sample and I'm sorry, in the population and then to create and then to number them. Okay. Step two is to actually, um, if we had a random table, which we have a, a, a table of random numbers here, um, we can use that table then to select the individuals in the sample. So the first thing we have to do is pick a starting point in the table. And we do that, we can do that by closing our eyes and placing a finger on it. And then this method also accomplishes the goal of it being random. So you could have picked any number. Suppose we start in column four, row 13. You can see down here, column four, row 13. And you see that entire number, I can barely read it honestly, 96101, okay? So we pick that entry, and since we're looking for two-digit numbers, we're going to use the last two numbers in there, which are columns 4 and 5. Here's the columns up here. This is from 0, 1 to 0, 5, so you can see there's five digits. We're going to use the last two numbers because we have two numbers. We've assigned all of our um, individuals to two number digits, 0, 1 to 30. Okay. So we can see that when we pick that from that first one, we have number 1. So that's our first selection. When we go through this, what we're just going to do is go down the table, start back at the next column, etc. Um, and we're going to select the numbers that are between 0, 1, and 30, inclusive. If the number is 0, 0, we're going to skip it. And we're going to skip any numbers greater than 30. Um, and we will skip any numbers already selected. So in the first one, we selected 1. So if we come across one, 0, 1 again, we're going to skip that. All right. So again, the first number in our list is 0, 01, so the client corresponding um, to 0, 01 is who we're picking. Now we need four more because remember we're selecting um, five um, different companies to survey. So what we're just going to do is we're going to go down the list and look at each of the numbers. The next number we come to is 52. Well, 52 is over 30, so we skip it. And then we come to 0, 07. You can see them bolded here in the table. So that's our next number. Then we hit 44 and 46 and 37. The next three numbers we have to skip because they're greater than 30. And then we hit 26 and then we hit 11 and we're at the bottom of the table. So we're going back up to the next column, um, the next overall column, and we're just going to pick the first two numbers. Okay, We're going to you know, go immediately from here to the next two. And you can see that the next two numbers are 23. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, we would just keep moving down the list, in this case, picking columns 6 and 7, until we had all of our five numbers. So we now have five numbers, 0, 1, 0, 7, 26, 11, and 23. And the companies that correspond to them in our original frame are ABC Electric, Dino Jump, Travel Zone, Fox Studios, and Simplex Forms. So this is just a way of using a random numbers um, to uh, creating a frame, numbering everything, and then using some kind of random number, like a table or a generator, which your calculator can do or StatCrunch can do, to actually create um, a random sample. So in example three, we're going to use um, technology um, to find a simple random sample. And this is the way it normally occurs. Um, it's rare for people to use random tables, but um, it does happen. Um, so we're going to find a simple random sample of five clients for the problem presented in the previous example. So we're doing the same problem in, that we did in example two, um, where the company was trying to select five out of, I think, 20 different companies. So we're going to use the same frame um, step one is to create the frame. We already did that in, in example two. 
um, that lists the numbers from 0, 1 to 30. Actually, it was 30 clients. The next thing we're going to do, and we're doing this on, a, on your TI-84 calculator, so you might want to follow along and try to do these. Um, figure A shows us, let me get my pointer up there, sorry. Figure A shows us um, setting the seed or the initial point um, for the random number. And we do this because technically, um, you know, it's not really, random generators are not really random, they're following programs. And so we try to initiate it with a different seed that kind of has a different starting point within the program, so it really does make it even more random, okay? From that, then we can use these following commands. Um, you can see um, random integers, non-repeating, between 1 and 30, and we want five of them. When we do that, we can see, oh, here, again, this is just what I was talking about, that random generators are not really random, um, and that's the seed that dictates the random numbers that are generated. And so you want to kind of start someplace, and so in a way, you're selecting the first random number that then, you know, is the starting point in the program. Again, we've generated these numbers, 11, 4, 20, 29, and 27, using our TI-84. And of course, going back to our the same frame, we see that the clients that we're going to send surveys to are Fox Studios, Casey's Glasshouse, Precise Plumbing, Walker Insurance, and Ultimate Electric. Now, I haven't gone through this <clears throat> in detail about how to do this on your calculator, because I want you to go into your textbook on pages 27 and 28 and review the technology step by step. You can see an image here from your textbook. And this provides instruction for using different technologies um, to generate simple random samples, um, including your TI-84 calculator that we just saw, but it also does stack crunch. I'd also recommend that you go online and watch some videos for using Excel um, for this, specifically generating random samples. But as we go through the course, Excel is used heavily in business, and um, it would be my judgment that that will serve you well um, as you get to your, um, as you graduate and move on to your job. So make sure, please, that you go in and again review the technology step by step, which is on pages 27 and 28. Here you see the beginning, and this isn't the end, of how to do the TI-84, um, and it also has a slightly different instructions for the TI-83 and 84.